Hello everyone, Team and Gamer here, and today I have the pleasure of bringing you another one of my FIFA 13 team tutorials. However, today's tutorial is not going to be a live team one, it's going to be one done after the match has been played, so I have a little bit more time to get my thoughts together and make a coherent tutorial, because the one problem I've had with this is whenever a game ends early, for example like the Liverpool game, I didn't talk about like Daniel Sturridge or Luis Suarez in any great depth, because I was planning to talk to them towards the end of the match, and obviously the guy left or got disconnected. And I didn't have the opportunity to do that. So from this one, I'm going to be doing it after the fact so I can clearly get through all the players and you can see them playing in the background. Now, as you saw from the screen at the start, today I'm playing a Spurs and I'm playing a 4-4-1-1 formation. Now, this is their default formation, but I have made quite a few changes to the starting lineup. So I'm going to quickly run through the starting lineup now. I've got Loris in goal, Walker, Cabal, Vatonga and Asu Okoto at the back. Lennon, Sandro, Dembele and Bale in midfield. And then Defoe and Adebayor up front. With Defoe playing slightly in behind Adebayor as the, the one behind the striker. So let's start off with Hugo Lloris in goal. Lloris is an absolutely fantastic goalkeeper. And like I mentioned with Pepe Reina in the video before, you know, when you're looking at a goalkeeper's rating, it can often be inflated by a really good kicking stat. And you don't necessarily want this in FIFA. You'd much rather your keeper be very, very good at the shot-stopping attributes. Because as long as his kicking's above 70, you're going to be okay. And this is exactly what you get with Lloris. He has 90 reflexes, 88 diving. The rest of his shot-stopping attributes are in the mid-80s to low 80s and only has 75 kicking so his stats are weighted perfectly in the direction you want them so I've never had any problems with Hugo Lloris and considering Spurs are a four and a half star team you very very rarely see a goalkeeper better against you I mean occasionally you'll draw a five star team and you, you might end up playing in Madrid and have Casillas in goal but if you keep drawing four and a half star teams you're not going to have a goalkeeper better than Lloris at the other end of the pitch he's just very very good Great shot stopper, pretty good distribution as well. He has a reasonable throw on him, and he's got a, a good enough kick to clear the ball. And you see several times in this game, I kick to wingers in space and launch attacks on there. So Loris, very, very solid. Now let's move on to the fullbacks. Both of these fullbacks are very, very good and very, very attacking. And let's talk about Kyle Walker first. Kyle Walker, obviously an England fullback. He has 90 acceleration and 93 sprint speed, and he's an absolute speed demon. There are very few wingers, as I very nearly score there actually with Jermaine, there are very few wingers in the game who are faster than Kyle Walker, so that's a really good thing. A lot of people like to run very, very pacey front lines and just try and run it into the channels, and Kyle Walker's a fantastic combo for that. And the great thing is as well, he has 87 stamina, so he'll be just as good at doing that in minute 90 as minute 1. So... Even late on in the game, when your rest of your team's getting a bit tired, Kyle Walker will still be putting a shift in at maximum speed. The one problem you do have to worry about with him, he has high attacking work rate and medium defensive work rate. And this is a common problem with a lot of Spurs defenders. So you'll see him make barreling runs upfield quite a lot, and you've just got to be a little bit careful with that. But as long as you keep that in mind, he's a very, very good fallback. And the same is with Benoit Asuakoto on the other side of the field. You know, Asuakoto... He's not as quick as Kyle Walker, not by any stretch of the imagination, but he's no slouch either, so it's good to have two quick fullbacks. And in addition, Asuakoto's technical stats are a little bit better. He's got 83 crossing, while Kyle Walker has low 70s crossing, so he's a lot more effective at that final ball. And at the same time, he has good tackling stats, you know, 83 stand tackle, and he has good interceptions as well, 81. So a lot of the time, he'll just swoop in, make the interception. Because he's made the interception and the winger's running in behind him, he'll have that little bit of a head start, so he can just keep keep running forwards and then he'll put a good cross into the middle to Adebayor who I'm going to talk about in a bit so he's a really really good player very very solid fullback so let's move into the middle of the field you know, first fullback uh, first centre back sorry I've gone for is uh, Eunice Kabul now Eunice Kabul's an 80 rating and he's replaced Michael Dawson who's a 79 rating but the major reason why I've dropped Michael Dawson because I quite like the way he plays is his dribbling Michael Dawson has I think it's 14 or 15 dribbling which for a professional footballer to have I, I don't think it's possible even like league 2 players have better dribbling than that but for some reason EA have decided to give him such horrendous dribbling stats and what this means is you can't do anything with him he has has to touch the ball and then he has to get rid of it because there's been plenty of times when I've played with Spurs and I've tried to like even just maneuver the ball at field a bit to look for a pass and he podges the dribble and gives the ball away and because he isn't the fastest centre back strikers just running behind and you can get yourself in massive trouble just because Michael Dawson has a ridiculously low dribbling stat so I've gone for Cabal, whose dribbling stat is much higher. It's not spectacular by any stretch. It's 60s, I think, off the top of my head. But, you know, it's still a lot better than 
a teen number, so he won't make any of those catastrophic errors that Dawson does. And in addition to this, you know, his stats, his defending stats, the core stats, are very, very solid. He has 83 heading accuracy, 84 stand tackle, 81 sprint speed as well, which is pretty good for a centre-back. You don't see many centre-backs quicker than him. And 86 strength. So he's a very tall, strong, composed centre-back who can tackle. And when he's tackled, he can do something with it. He doesn't have dribbling so incredibly woeful that he'll just pods the ball over the place. So he's nice and solid. And I think he plays very, very well alongside Jan Vertonghen because Jan Vertonghen is another one of those players with the high attacking work rate, medium defensive work rate and this can be a massive problem in the centre back because that's the one position you don't want running up the field on a whim so having a pacey centre half alongside Vertonghen is a good thing so having a ball to cover really does play well but like I mentioned Vertonghen is a very very good centre back as well he's not quite as strong as Kabul but he has slightly better technical attributes. So he has 84 heading accuracy, 82 interceptions, so 83 stand tackle as well. So he's a nice and solid. And the good thing about both these centre-backs, well, I don't know whether it's good or not, but another thing about both these centre-backs is they both have quite good long shots. So if Vertonghen has a, a driven free kick as one of his traits. So if you like to get your centre-backs up the pitch and they find themselves in a little bit of space 30 yards out, they can have a decent shot towards goal. So... That's another thing you may want to be trying to make use of if you like playing in that way. So that's the back five out of the way. Let's move into midfield and let's start with Aaron Lennon on the right. Now, Aaron Lennon, as in real life, is just absolutely rapid on FIFA. He has 94 acceleration and 91 sprint speed. That is seriously, seriously quick. But also... He's not just a bit of a speed demon like he is in real life. You know, people criticise his end product in real life. But on FIFA, he has pretty good distribution attributes. He has 83 dribbling, 84 ball control, 85 stamina and 80 crossing. So those are very good core attributes. And look at that for a goal. What on earth is my centre-back doing there? That is really atrocious. But going back to Aaron Lennon, he has a lot of very, very good attributes. That mean that not only can he take a player on, but then he can dribble round another player. He can keep the ball, he can pass, and he can put balls into the box. So he isn't just a one-trick pony. And that's the one thing I mentioned with my Liverpool tutorial. Now, I didn't like playing Raheem Sterling because all he has is speed. You know, he doesn't have anything else. You know, that's why I decided to play Stuart Downing in the end, and I really don't rate Stuart Downing much at all. But I couldn't play Sterling because that's all he does. All he does is run. So by having a winger who can do more than that, it's very, very useful, especially when he does it at the speed Aaron Lennon does. So that's on one wing, and on the other wing, obviously, I've gone for Gareth Bale there. Now, in the default formation, Gareth Bale is in the centre-forward role, but I like him playing as an out-and-out -out winger. He has, I think it's only three-star weak foot, so his right foot isn't fantastic, and I like my central players to be you know, absolute demons and finishing, and Bale is such a good winger, I feel he's a little bit wasted there on FIFA. You know, if you look at Bale's stats, you know, he has 84 crossing, 86 dribbling, 84 ball control, 92 acceleration and 94 sprint speed. I mean, those are tremendous stats for a winger on FIFA. Because he can take players on with skill, he can run round them, he has dribbling so the ball doesn't bounce off him, got a good first touch so he can take the ball under pressure and then run round someone, and then he has good crossing to put it in the box with his left foot as he's running past the defender. So, for me, it's a no-brainer. I always play Bale on the wing when I play a Spurs. Whenever I tried him in the middle, I just didn't feel like it was the right position for him. He's very good there, but I feel like he's much better as a winger. So that's where I've gone for with the wingers. In midfield, I've gone for Sandro. Now, you could play Scott Parker in this role, but I just I feel like Sandro's a better player. And sometimes in FIFA, you just get a feeling for a player who you like. And perhaps the stats don't quite back it up. Or even if they do, it doesn't matter. You can have a bias for one sort of player over the other. And this is definitely the case for Sandro. But he has some very, very solid stats as well. And most importantly, he has high defensive work rate and only medium attacking work rate. Because like I mentioned, so many players in this Spurs side have high attacking work rate. You know, you've got the fullbacks, you've got Jan Vertonghen, and you've got you know the wingers, obviously, and the players I'm going to be bringing on to in the middle alongside him. Moussa Dembele, he likes to get forward too. So having this player who just wants to stay deep and protect your back four is absolutely vital and if you look at Sandro's core stats I mean he has 84 stand tackle 85 slide tackle 86 interceptions 87 aggression 85 stamina and 82 strength that is absolutely phenomenal for a holding midfield. It really is brilliant. I mean, when you consider his overall rating isn't over 80, when you look at those stats, they really are pretty tremendous. And he does such a good job that sits in front of the back four, chases guys down, 
put to tackling. When you win that ball back, you've just got to keep it simple within the nice, easy pass. There's so many attacking players in this Spurs team, you don't need to overcomplicate things with Sandro. So win the ball, pass it to Dembele, roll it out to Winger, into the feet of Defoe, whatever you fancy, and then go from there. So that's Sandro. Let's move alongside to his midfield partner, Moussa Dembele. Now, Dembele is a much more attacking player than Sandro, and I feel these two complement each other very, very well. If you look at Moussa Dembele's stats in comparison to Sandro, they're all so much more attack-focused. He has you know, 85 acceleration, 83 sprint speed, which isn't too shoddy at all for a central midfielder. So you often see him stride away from his midfield opponents and get into a little bit of space. He has 88 dribbling, fantastic. 86 ball control, again, fantastic. 83 short passing and 84 shot power. However, the one thing I would caution is don't shoot too often with Dembele. He does have a little bit of a ping and he can get good shots away if you need to. But his long shots are low 70s and I think his finishing is even worse than that. So you really don't want to be taking too many shots with him. Keep just taking players on, rolling the ball wide to winger, trying to slot a striker through. And you'll have a lot more success than if you go for all the long shots. But like I mentioned, the rest of his stats are very, very good for that attack-minded midfielder. And he goes very well alongside Sandro. So let's move up the field now. And I'm playing Jermaine Defoe in a centre forward role. And this is because I've set this team up for counter-attacking. And what I normally like to do is win the ball in midfield, get it wide to winger, put the cross in, try and have Adebayor win the header and if that doesn't happen, Jermaine Defoe picks up the scraps and the reason why I want Jermaine Defoe in that role is because his finishing stats are absolutely tremendous. He has 87 finishing, 87 shot power and 84 long shots. Now that is absolutely phenomenally good. Now he can take players on he's not the slowest as well he's got low 80 speed so he can stride past players and anywhere within 25 yards he is an excellent excellent finisher on that right foot so what you're looking to do again feed off the scraps of Adebayor try and check the ball back to him if you run to the byline pull the ball back to him 12 yards out and he'll fire at home most times he's very very good in that role you know he also has pretty good uh, physical stats he has like 88 balance you know very very good so he often gets the ball under a bit of pressure stays on his feet shifts the ball away and has a shot on target and you know, he's a very very good player and one I really like playing in this team and I'm glad I found this way to do it because you know, it was either him or Adebayor before, and this is a way to get both of them into the team, and I like the way they play on FIFA. Perhaps Adebayor had a bad season in real life, but in FIFA, he's a bit of a beast, as we'll move on to now. You know, Emmanuel Adebayor has 85 heading accuracy, 81 dribbling as well, so he's not just a massive tank. He can bring the ball down and run with it if you need to. He has 84 strength, so he can hold players off when he's dribbling or in the air. He also has 81 finishing and 83 volleys as well. So if the ball drops him on his head, on his foot, in the air, bouncing, bobbling on his chest, he can still have a good shot on target. He holds that defender off, lines up his shot and scores a surprising number of goals. And I had him in my early ultimate team and had massive success with him. I really, really did. So yeah, that's the team. Spurs are ideal to play with on the counter-attack. They've got so much pace, both fullbacks. Defoe's not slow. Both wingers are quick. They've got a great target man. They've got midfielders who can win the ball and pass. They've got a centre forward who can really score a lot of goals. They are just an ideal team on the counter-attack. And when you look at their defence as well, nice and solid with a real top-class goalkeeper and goal. For a four-and-a-half star team, this is a real potent mix. It is absolutely tremendous. And I would heartily recommend playing with them. And as you can see here, this guy could not take me with Spurs. They are an absolutely tremendous side. If you haven't played with them, definitely recommend it. They're only going to get better on FIFA 13. Chances are they'll be that five-star team. So if you enjoy playing with those four-and-a-half-star teams, definitely give them a go. But guys, once again, thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. And as always, have a great day.